real estate investing offers numerous benefits for female entrepreneurs. It provides financial independence through steady income streams from rental properties and profitable sales, while also providing a means for long-term wealth building due to property appreciation. That's why today we are talking about it. Hello and welcome to The Money Mindset Show, the place where we help female entrepreneurs to transform their mind so that they can achieve financial success in the least amount of time. Here, we talk about subconscious mind, we talk about money mindset chips, money mindset blocks, a strategy so that you can bypass your own money mindset and increase your income, better your relationship with money and grow your business. Welcome, Laura, to one episode of The Money Mindset Show. It is our pleasure to have you here. Guys, Laura is just have given birth and I'm rooting for her being here on this podcast because we tried to do it before you were um, on maternity leave. Yeah. Um, and it was just like impossible because I was on maternity leave and I'm like, <laughs> okay, trying to fix everything. But here you are. So welcome, Laura. And thank you so much thank for being you. here with us. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited and looking forward to to chatting with you. Absolutely. So let's get into the topic. Today, we are talking about something that I haven't explored much on the podcast. The reason being is because I'm not an expert myself on real estate, mm-hmm. although I invest a lot in real estate um, in different countries. But I'm very excited to get your insights for this part of finances that is real estate, right? So mm-hmm. tell us a little bit about who you are, what you do, and how did you got to get into the real estate world? Yeah. So just to share a little bit about my story, you know, I hadn't always been in real estate or didn't go to school or grow up aspiring to be a real estate investor or professional one day. Initially, you know, I went to school for marketing and international business. I had a corporate position that I absolutely loved at one point in time, it granted me a number of opportunities to travel. And, you know, my goal was to move up the corporate ladder and, and, you know, I succeeded at that and and achieving those personal goals. However, my personal priorities eventually changed as I was having children and wanting to have more flexibility within my schedule. And just to kind of give you an overlay a bit of how I got into real estate, it was actually my husband that persuaded me uh, just over a decade ago. He always had the interest. I would say that, you know, I wasn't disinterested in it. It just wasn't necessarily what I was most eager to jump into. However, back in 2015, we decided or I decided I saw that uh, a training, a seminar was coming through town in New York City and I decided to sign us up for it. Uh, so we signed up for this weekend long seminar where we got to meet other professionals, learn about um, beginning and whatnot, and decided to take the leap at that point in time to jump into real estate. And so what that entailed at the time was taking a hefty financial investment for us to pay for the courses, the mentorships, and what we needed to learn to get started. So we jumped in at that point in time. And I would say, you know, I share the story a number of times in my social media and in my newsletters and with my students and myself is that that particular investment for us at that time was pretty hefty, especially since our main goal at the time was paying off student loans. And we had other financial obligations or goals to to achieve at that time. Deciding to jump into real estate then was an investment of about $30,000 for us. And so I knew that we couldn't let, we couldn't fail. I just knew we couldn't fail at this. We needed to go out and get started and learn everything that we can. So we really took advantage of uh, the mentorships that we had. We would go to work during the day and the evenings. We would have our head deep in our books, either at home or go to Starbucks and make it a little date between my husband, my boyfriend, and my now husband and learn what we could as far as the different real estate investment strategies. At that point in time, we decided to get into wholesales, particularly um, because of the the payout, ultimately. So going out, getting involved in, in wholesales, we would do what was called um, 
essentially driving, driving around looking for properties, but we were in New York City. So we would take a bus into New Jersey and walk around for a couple hours looking for opportunities to reach out to. And that's ultimately how we got started. So it was, you know, my husband that had the interest. I decided, you know, I was really influenced on that weekend seminar and deciding to jump in and then heavily encouraged not to fail at this, to go out and do everything that we can. My biggest goal at that point in time was at least to get one deal or two deals to pay back the investment that we took if it, and if it wasn't for us. But the reality of it is I'm so thankful, you know, nearly 10 years later, um, is that everything that we learned, the mentors that we had, the other individuals and professionals we've met and, and um, networked with within the industry. So growing our own personal confidence in what it is that we're doing, I really would say, and I, I share with all my students nowadays, is that it's really the first deal that is the hardest because you haven't yet done it. But once you, it's not even necessary that you have to know it all, but understanding enough, going out there and exercising the the skill of just going out there and doing something. Once you have one under your belt, it builds enough confidence to within yourself that I can go out there and do this again. And with each and every deal, it gets a little easier each each deal is a little different, um, but it gets a little easier going out there. Um, but ultimately, that's how we got started in real estate a number of years ago. So nearly 10 years ago, I can't believe that it's already been that long. It definitely doesn't seem like it that we jumped in, got started with wholesales and then long term holds and then eventually migrated over more recently within the past two years to the Burr method, which where we've been focused on growing our portfolio for longer term uh, wealth as well, wealth growth, as well as passive income. Hey, I want to tell you about one of my favorite podcasts. Everyone's talking money. You and I know that I love to talk about money, but it is a subject that we all need to deal with. But most of the people actually never wants to talk about it. This is why I love everyone's talking money. Hosted by fellow money expert Shanna Game. Shanna has a point of view I really love and her way to get complex topics around money so simply explained is amazing. I mean, just in our episode together, Healing Financial Wounds, Addressing the Financial Trauma in BIPOC Communities, the conversation got very, very deep and so useful for everyone listening that I can't wait for you to listen to this episode too. So go ahead and check out Everyone's Talking Money podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you are listening to this podcast. Let me give people a context for those ones who are not very familiar with real estate. So the real estate that I do is a hold of the long term, the properties. Mm -hmm. So I buy and I rent out um, the mm -hmm. properties. And uh, that's different of what you just described because you were looking. I don't know if flipping is the, the exact word, but you were looking to buy the houses, right? That's why you were looking going into the 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 spaces and walking around and then you will sell those houses. So let's start there. What are the different types of investment when it comes to real estate? And personally, which one is the one that you like the most? Why? Uh, or, or the one that you teach and why? Yeah. So ultimately, there are two primary methods that we teach now. Uh, and I can dive into those reasons in a little bit. But when we got started wholesale method, we felt that it was the less risk to us. Not that any of them necessarily have the risk associated, but it took the least amount from us. So we didn't even have to have capital to start. With the wholesale method in particular, you are never actually owning the property. Mm -hmm. So with that particular method, you're going out, you're looking for properties perhaps that are distressed of reaching out to the owners, which there are a number of different methods that we teach within our course and to our students on how to find and reach out to, to the owners of those properties. And there's a number of reasons why they may be interested in selling. Perhaps, you know, the taxes are too high. Maybe they inherited the property and they're not even really interested in maintaining or keeping the property. There's a number of different reasons why someone would be looking to sell their properties. 
with a wholesale method, you find that property, you're placing it under contract, uh, typically. So you're placing under contract with them. You, you usually have certain estimates on how much it would be to bring that property up. So whether it needs minor renovations or uh, a full renovation, you know how much to add into that depending on the market that you're in. And then you're reaching out to buyers. Other bu- buyers or individuals are looking either to purchase the property for themselves or investors. So other investors, typically, that's my go-to, where you're then assigning them the contract and they are going in purchasing it. So then you are taking a step back. You never actually own the property, but you're getting a commission mm-hmm. from it. And you know the mm-hmm. average is about five to ten thousand dollars on a commission from a wholesale. Although you know I've gone down to about two thousand dollars, and I've had colleagues within the industry that'll make a commission of twenty thousand dollars from a wholesale deal. Um, but that's predominantly what we were doing the first handful of years was conducting wholesales and then taking our split of our commission. So we never actually owned those properties. Then later on, we migrated over. So taking, you know, our personal incomes that we had from our regular jobs and the income we were making from wholesales and then reinvesting that into properties, which we were doing um, buy and hold. So long-term similar to yourself. Uh, Mm -hmm. So we're taking them, renovating them, bringing them, you know, well, some of them didn't even necessarily need renovations, but going in, adding some details to them, or some of them needed a little more love and care there, and then finding renters to go in, and then also moving over to short-term rentals with Airbnb being very popular. So that's something else that we moved over to in the, right, just right before COVID. Mm -hmm. And then from that, it's that... Right before COVID was, yeah. you know, you know, things were, were moving. It was a little new to us in a sense, because that's when we were getting into doing the longer term holds. Um, mm-hmm. and then of course COVID came. So we got nervous. So, you know, what is this right. going to do? Are people even going to rent? And that's actually right when we started looking at doing short term rentals mm-hmm. right at that brink of COVID. So we weren't really sure how that was going to be impacted. Are people, you know, people aren't going to be traveling. We were getting involved in doing short-term rentals. And here we're going to have these properties sitting now, not bringing in any income. But that ne- wasn't necessarily the case. It, you know, we did see people that were still traveling and staying, you know, maybe even a little longer. So not long-term where they were renting out for a year, eight months, a year or two. But going and not necessarily renting out a weekend, but renting out a month at a time. Um, so those properties were still being rented and we just had to learn how to evolve with the times and, and go with the flow as far as what the market was giving us at the time as well. Right. Okay. Um, I'm thinking, how does somebody that right now is listening to this episode and says, I'm interested in in exploding the idea of real real estate investments, how that person can start? Uh, what should that person know? The basic of okay, if you want to do this, then this these are the three things that you should know about that. Um, one of them being the money, because mm-hmm. this is a money podcast, um, and a lot of you are listening to this. Uh, because you're looking for ways to expand the vision that you have. And that is the reason why I think this episode in particular is so cool because not many people, everybody's talking about the stock market. Not many people is talking mm-hmm. about real estate and I'm a huge believer on real estate investments. In terms of money, what do they should know? And what are three things that you think are valuable to know before jumping in to take one of your courses or to reach out to you like this is what you can expect if you can if you reach out or look for a, a course on real estate yeah so the three things that i would say for any individual who is looking to get started or even expand in real estate perhaps you already jumped in you have a property or two but you're looking to further scale there um the three things i would say one is knowing or having it doesn't have to be an indefinite decision, but having a good idea as far as what type of investing strategy you want to begin with or pursue moving forward. So again, that's wholesales where you never actually own the property. There's long-term rentals, short-term rentals, uh, and then even flips. So I would Uh say having a relatively good foundation or understanding as far as which particular strategy meets what it is that you're looking for 
each method takes different has different requirements for funds associated, different time uh, timelines involved, or how much involvement they need from you. So some of them have more involvement where you're very involved, and some you can step back and be very minimally involved. So that's the first thing. The second thing I would say or recommend is having a good idea or having done some some research as far as what market or markets you want to invest in. Um, I have so this conversation important. a lot with our students, especially in students from California, for example, or certain states that they jump in and they, like, they want to invest in their backyard. But California is very expensive to invest in, for example. So you don't always need to invest in your own backyard. You know, you can invest remotely, you know, in Idaho, Montana, other states, uh, if you will. But having some minimal research or having the network of individuals that you can reach out to to give you some guidance as well as different markets, pros and cons. And that's something that we also speak about uh, within our courses and within our community uh, of students. And then third of all, and I always say that this is one that I feel shocks most students, is the financial aspect. So of course, uh, I have conversations with students that are very eager, interested to get started in real estate, but the idea or the concept of where the funds are going to come from scares them away Mm -hmm. a little bit. And that shouldn't necessarily be the case. There are so many different ways to fund real estate. And one, the obvious, I would say, you know, having savings or your own capital to funds, you know, whether it's a 401k, savings, taking from stock, whatever it may be that you can fund or equity from your personal home to fund your first project. However, this is where I say tends to be the mind blowing or the shocker to some students is that you can get started in real estate without your own funds. There are so many and I, what I call other people's money. So there's several different methods to accessing other people's money. And that isn't necessarily just private loans. So going to a bank for a loan. There's also hard money loans, there's private money, there's partnerships that you can create, equity partnerships. Um, So there's so many other methods that don't necessarily even require your own funds where you could get started. And that's something else. That's one of the main things that we teach within our courses with our students and also introducing them to networks of hard money lenders and how to structure those contracts. Uh, So you have access to the funds having the appropriate timeline to purchase, close that property and um, renovate that property if it needs renovations Mm -hmm. and placing tenants within them. So that's particularly our BRRRR method that we teach as well, uh, which teaches you how to acquire property within so many months, that what markets may be of interest to you, how to access funds that are not necessarily your funds. Um, and then we work with you one-on-one as well. You know, everyone's circumstances and situation is a little different and unique. So we can work with you, you know, putting together your own personal funds with hard money lenders uh, and creating a, a specific strategy for yourself uh, that may work for yourself. And then once you are closing on that property, connecting you with, depending what market you're investing in, with contractors within that area that can go in, renovate within a certain timeline and get a renter within that property. And then from there, how to um, refinance that property. So you're getting to pull money out of that property and you have the renter paying your mortgage there on out. And then how you're paying back your private money lenders. So you're getting those closed out within the first year or less uh, and then taking your profits from there. So you're able to grow your asset portfolio passive income, and then you're growing your longer term wealth because that particular property will have forced appreciation with the renovations you mm-hmm. did, and then long term appreciation with just the you know regular economy pushing that value of that property up. Love it. Um, <laughs> okay, we, can, we could go forever talking about this. But here's the thing. When it comes to real estate, this is my own personal experience. You got to dip your toes into the water. And like you said at the beginning, you got to kind of see and taste what is your job. Um, is it long term? Is it short term? Is it Airbnb? Not because everybody's talking about Airbnb. Mm-hmm. It means that it's for you. Not because everybody's talking about o- owning 250, I don't know, houses. That means that it's for you. It's really what, and it goes with your risk profile. The risk profile mm-hmm. is what we call an investment. Um, how willing are you to risk 
the capital that you are putting mm-hmm. because this is still an investment. It's a, it's a risk in mm-hmm. it, in the transaction itself. So it goes to, and, and there are so many different elements, personal elements that only you can see once you start looking for it. And once you start understanding what the different type of things um, they are for you, if it fits you or not. So my best suggestion is that if you listen to what just Laura said, if you have been looking for um, how to understand real estate, just go ahead and reach out to her, reach out or look for um, a real estate investment and start getting clear on that. From my personal experience, my first real estate investment was when I had my first job. I knew very, very clear I wanted to own um, houses. I don't know if we, it was because I, I played too much Monopoly when I was growing up or <laughs> what the heck happened. But I knew that my first investment after um, stock market, because I started that in university, but my first grown up, quote unquote grown up investment was mm-hmm. going to be real estate. So my experience is that it, f- it feels so good to know that you own the land. And I know now um, with this trauma informed approach and generational trauma, I know where that's coming from. For Mm -hmm. Latinos, for my community, owning land, like my family, owning land means something. It's just like Mm -hmm. I I grew up hearing my grandparents say, you don't have anything, but if you have the land, you have the whole world. But deep down, it's just like in in really in your subconscious, in my subconscious mind, it was like a real estate, right? That was Mm -hmm. before. And that's why I did it so early. But. Honestly, I, I don't know what is your take on it, but real estate, it's much more peaceful investment than any other type of investment. Like if you have your stomach for, for cryptocurrency and whatever, and that's your jam, NFTs and whatever, go ahead. I don't have the stomach for that. Um, I, I, I don't even want to look at it, but I do have the stomach to go and check a house. And see, this is what we can do because also it's the creative part. Yes, exactly too. And it's, you know, part of the fun of going out and looking at a property or prospective property is getting the ideas as far as what can I do with this property? How can I make it more homey? What can I do to make someone who's renting it long term or short term come in and have quite an experience? So it has the creative part of it as well. And sometimes I have ideas or my mind just like run from me because I'm like, okay, that's maybe I need to scale back a, a little here of everything that I want to <laughs> do. Um, yeah. But there's definitely the creative aspect of it as well. And being a creative person myself, or I, I associate myself as a cre- creative person, that it brings that that joy and fulfillment out of me as well of being able to partake in, in something creative. Ah, uh, Yeah. I I agree with that. I what can I say? I I enjoy going into other people's houses and looking at like, oh, I can do this or I can do that. We can do that. Whatever. Um, exactly. I'm gonna <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna close this episode, inviting everybody to if you have been looking for real estate to contact you. So, what is the best mm-hmm. way to, uh, for people to get in touch with you? Uh, what are the programs that you are offering or the courses that you're, that you're offering? I know that you mentioned it before, but I'll go right mm-hmm. ahead um, and tell us where they can find you. Yeah. So two ways I would say is Instagram and their Instagram is Laura Navaquin. So at Laura Navaquin and also our website, which right now is www.laura.lauranavaquin.com. So on there, I have more information about how we got started, my background, who I am as well. But then our courses are on there as well. And then just to jump in a little on our courses, we also have a free download uh, that you can access uh, by our website or also going on to Instagram at Laura Navaquin as well. The free download consists in-depth details about various different methods or strategies that we personally have partaken in. Uh, which shares some of the experiences and pros and cons that we found in each of those methods and hoping that that can help you further decide which method fits your 
style your appetites and what risk you're looking to get involved in and also just your your time uh, how much time and energy you're looking to be involved in as well with each of those different methods so that's a free download uh, and then as far as our in-depth courses and community the two courses that we are offering currently is one is on wholesales so just to touch on that real quickly you never actually own the property mm-hmm. but you're finding the properties and then contracting them to buyers and taking your commission from that. Uh, so it's more transactional. And then the other method that we're teaching on in our course right now is the Burr method. And that's typically, it could be for short term holds, but it's typically for longer term holds, uh, where you're finding property, contracting, closing, renovating, putting a renter in it, refinancing, and then repeating. So that's a method in teaching our students how to grow their real estate portfolio. So being able to grow your real estate portfolio, typically at a slightly quicker pace, because we're teaching methods on how to access other streams of money that aren't necessarily your own, how to set up your business structures. So you're reducing your personal liability as well um, by putting your property in business structures uh, and um, and, and growing your long-term wealth that way through passive income, forced appreciation, and then long-term appreciation that goes along with any property. Uh, love it. Thank you so much, Laura, for being here, um, for taking time out of your baby and family right now. Okay. But before I let you go, do you know that you have a space where your money mindset work is made extra simple so that you can increase your income, better your relationship with money, and grow your business in such a simple and easy way, go to themoneymindsethub.com and choose your path and start making those changes easily and effortlessly. That is themoneymindsethub.com. 